Hi, welcome back to Rust 101. Uh, this is video 29. Uh, my name's Andy. Last time we were talking about dynamic dispatch and that was all leading towards object safety. Um, uh, and so we talked about trait objects, which is where we're dealing with um, something we don't actually know what type it is. We only know that it implements a trait. And we, in order to do that, we have to hold onto it via some kind of pointer type, like a, a reference or a mutable reference or a box or something like that. And um, we ended with this kind of tantalizing thing of, in order for this to work, traits need to be object safe. So today we're going to talk about what object safety is. So here's like a list of some of the rules. We're not going to particularly look at this because there's a different list that I'm going to look at. Um, uh, and even that list is not going to help us a great deal. So we're going to look at some examples. Um, um, I'm going off piste for this video. So we're, we're going to just go through an example, a bunch of examples of how this stuff works and why the rules are how they are so like it's a confusing set of rules until you understand what's going on underneath all right so um, we have got an example piece of code very very simple we've got a trait called my trait and down here we've got a struct called my struct and my struct implements my trait we've got a load of commented out stuff which i'll gradually show you so um, we make a box we put a my struct inside it so we've got one of these pointer types uh, uh, but we say that the, the, the type of X, which holds onto this box, is a box of din my trait, not a box of my struct, right? So we don't know the actual, the compiler doesn't know the type of X. If we ask the compiler what the type is, it just says it's a box of din my trait. And then later on, we call a method on X. So we're using this as a trait object, um, calling methods on it, even though the compiler doesn't know what its type is, right? So we're allowed to do this. I just ran it. It runs, it prints hello world 4, because my method on this struct here returns like the number you passed in plus one. So it works, um, but then we've got a whole load of method types, some of which don't work, um, which we can um, which we can add to this. So let's start off by by trying to add some kind of constructor so we want to say if we say if we've got one uh, one of my trait we want to construct something uh which is of like which is which is like of this type of my trait right so let's create the constructor in the actual struct and what it all it does actually is just like makes like my struct doesn't have any data in it so it just makes one of my struct this doesn't have to be self this could be my struct here that might be clearer, or it could even be my struct bracket bracket, right? That just means create create an instance of self and return it. So it all seems like it should be fine, but we've got some red lines here. So let's see what the compiler has to say to us. So what it says is, my trait cannot be made into an object because it's not object safe. And it says, um, uh, the problem is because of this method, uh, this associated function, my constructor, which has no self parameter. Um, it would need to have a self parameter for this to make sense. And it sends us to this page, the object safety page. So I've already got that open, here it is. Um, so let's have a look at what this object safety page says about what the rules are for when an object can be object safe. And then like even these rules, I think they're quite helpful, but they don't explain why, and we're gonna try and explain why a little bit. So first of all, any uh, super traits of our trait must also be object safe. So a super trait is where you say, um, if we said my trait colon my other trait, if I could type, um, and that basically means my trait also has all the methods that are in my other trait. Well, all they're saying is my trait can't be object safe if my other trait is not object safe, right? So fine, pretty obvious. Um, but also it must not be sized. Um, so the whole point of object safety is that it's not sized, right? That we we don't know the size of the the thing we're talking about. So that's why that's there. Also, there's a couple of rules which seem a little bit arbitrary. Uh, it mustn't have any associated constants. So associated constants would be something like const x, which is an i32 is five. Say that wouldn't be allowed. Um, and also, what else does it say? It mustn't have associated types with generics. So you can have like type, um, I don't know, foo equals i32. Is that how you write types? Um, no, no, you just have to say, yeah, sorry, you just have to say it's type foo, right? Um, you're allowed that, but what you're not allowed is that if it takes in some 
type T, I think. Something like that. Anyway, a couple of fairly arbitrary rules, um, which I'm not going to go into. And we um, we got here because we had this constructor, and we're going to get to, hopefully, um, why that is. So any associated functions must be either be dispatchable, which we'll talk about what that means, or explicitly non-dispatchable. So let's talk first about non-dispatchable. So if you say, if you make a associated function, but you add the aware clause where self colon sized, you're basically saying this function is allowed to exist or has to exist if you want to implement this fun this trait, but it's not usable from uh, a place where self is not sized. Um, so that's what that, this means. And, and object, uh, like, a trait object is a place where self is not sized. So that you can have the, you can have functions like that. Um, but they, um, they won't be usable from in the context of a trait object. So let's have a look at that, an example of that. Let's put, uh, let's get rid of our constructor for one second. Hopefully we'll get back to that. And let's add a method, which I've already got here called my non dispatchable. And notice that it said, says where self sized. Let's implement it in our struct. Right, so we've got um, a, a method um, which is explicitly kind of opting out from object safety. We can run this code and it works. It's just complaining that we didn't do, we didn't call my non-dispatchable. And you can use this method from a kind of normal context. You can call G and pass in um, like a a reference, well, let's make it, let's make it a my struct. Right? We can, we can call G with a reference to Y. And we can call this my non dispatchable method. So G is just any odd function, right? Um, you can call this my non dispatchable method on G. If we run this, it still works. We could have got it to print something out inside my non dispatchable or something, but you get the idea. So even though, so basically, the reason why this works is that at compile time, the compiler knows the type of Y and uh, creates a G function, creates like a copy of G for my struct, because it knows that at, at compile time that T is a my struct. It's not actually using like some kind of DIN my trait here. It's actually just creating a copy of G where T is exactly my struct. So it knows exactly how to uh, call this function. But if we try and call it you know, based on X, we're going to get an error. And the error is basically you said I wasn't allowed to do this. So it, you said in order for, to call my non-dispatchable, self had to be sized. But in this situation, X is not sized because it's a trait object. So that's us explicitly opting out from being able to call this method on uh, a something which is a trait object. Now, in the case of this method, there's actually no no reason to opt out, right? Like uh, you could have just um, allowed that to be called on X, but for some of the things that we come up come too soon, um, we need to opt out. So because because they're not allowed, they break the rules. So let's put back our constructor because that's how we got here, and see our error that we get, which is basically saying what we've already seen. My constructor is no good because it has no self parameters. So why? Why is it not okay to have a method that, um, that, uh, that works on a trait object which doesn't have a self? And the reason is um, because of the memory layout that we talked about last time of how these things look. So a trait object is like it's like a pointer to uh, something which has a trait. So it's something like a reference or something like that. So in this case, we're looking at how the memory is laid out for a, a reference to a write. So it's uh, it's we know the size of it. It's always going to be two uh, bytes or two two things, <laughs> probably bytes. Um, sorry, not bytes. Um, to to like pointer size things. Um, so like words. Then so it's going to be a pointer to the actual um, data of the thing, and another pointer to this v table. This v putter is a pointer to the v table, and the v table is where all the methods are, and also the information about how big the object is and stuff like that. So. Um, if you want to be able to call a method on this, this trait object, which is what a reference to din right is, it is the trait object. If you want to be able to call a method on it, you need to go and look where that method is in the V table. But if we're in a situation where there is no self, 
we don't have an instance of trait. So we don't have that two um, word thing that 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 thing which has the data and the and the vputer in it, or the pointers to the data and the vputer in it. So how are we supposed to go look up the V table, find where this my constructor method is, and call it? So like you can't like it's kind of the same thing as here. You can't you can't call x dot my constructor right because my constructor because that my constructor doesn't take an x right. There's no self parameter. So it, it, it like you're not like the only way you would be able to find where that that method is on my struct is by looking in x it, looking in x's v table, but you don't have an x. So you can't look in X's V table, so you can't call my constructor on X. So it kind of doesn't make sense what we're trying to do anyway. Um, but if we want, if we're getting this error because we've got a trait that we want to use in, in a, an object, a trait object style, well, we can get away from it, get away with it by the same trick we just saw of saying, okay, you, there is a constructor, but it's only callable when you're not a trait object. So this is like your way of cheating. If you've got methods uh, or like associated functions on your trait, which is and it's telling you you're not allowed that on a trait object, well then just like add that where self sized, and now it's not obviously it's not callable on X. Doesn't even take an X, um, but that trait can still have that method. So that's that's like like if you can get your head around that, we're we're halfway there. Let's look at some other stuff. So. Um, what about generic methods? Now we might well want to be able to create a generic method on X or on my trait, which takes in like a T, which is different every time. So maybe we want to be able to add it to floats as well as adding it to I32s or something like that. So we want to be able to call X dot my generic method and then like pass in, I don't know, 4.5. Pass in a float. Uh, and it doesn't like it. And we'll eventually, we're going to get our heads around why it doesn't like it. So it says, again, it says, my trait cannot be made into an object. For a trait to be object safe, it needs to allow building a vtable. Same, same error message as before. But then it says, my generic method has generic type parameters. So this is the rule we had here. Um, does not, uh, a dispatchable function must not have any type parameters. So we could get out of this the same way by saying, like, where self colon sized on this method. But then we wouldn't be allowed to call it here. So the question is, why? What if I wanted to call it here? Why am I not allowed to? And it, this can feel very annoying because you really, really want um, um, a generic method on something that you're using um, as a trait object, but you just you just can't have one. It doesn't make sense. And the reason it doesn't make sense is how would it know what method to call? So the way generic um, methods or functions work is that uh, the compiler at compile time examines all your code and sees, oh, well, you're, they're calling it with a float. So I'm going to generate a method, a function called my generic method, um, which is like a, which is my generic method on a my struct. But when the compiler is looking at this code, it doesn't know that X is a my struct. Remember, it only knows that X is a din my trait. So how's it supposed to go off and generate um, a method on my struct, which takes in a float? And bear in mind, like you could, the compiler has no way of knowing that you don't need hundreds and hundreds of these. So it couldn't like generate them on everything that could ever be a my trait because it doesn't even know the whole list of all things that could be a my trait. So um, it doesn't make sense. And another way around of thinking about it is inside X is this V table, as we've already talked about, this list of all the methods. Um, but in this case, like, how, is it going to have a list of my generic method with, with a float and with an I32 and with any other type you might ever want? Um, that doesn't really, it doesn't quite, doesn't work. So Vtable is just a list of like one method per name, basically. And in this case, it just doesn't know which one to call. So you can't, it, if you think about it enough, this thing doesn't make sense. So you, you're not allowed to do it, right? Uh, questions, comments in the, uh, uh, down below, very welcome. But hopefully that makes some kind of sense. Like you can't, you can't generate this kind of infinitude of all possible types that that T might be on that generic method and put them all in the V table. Okay, what else? Um, well, you're not allowed to refer to self except in that first argument here. So let's try this. We're going to make this function called my selfie. And it, uh, it, it, it's, it receiver is self, is reference to self, which is fine. 
but it also makes reference to self elsewhere um, in, in like in the other arguments. So let's run, see what it says. And we get a pretty similar error to last time, which is that it, my trait can't be made into an object. Go look up the rules. And the rule that you're breaking is my selfie references the self type um, somewhere other than in the receiver, which is the first argument. And that's not allowed. And that's basically all it says. And the question is why? Well, the, the answer is, again, if you kind of think about it hard enough, um, it's going to make sense. So if you look at my selfie on my struct, it's expecting to take in a my struct, right? The, the type of other is a reference to my struct, because that's what self means. Um, but when the, when it's trying to, when it's getting called this method, if, imagine if we were calling it here. Um, so we're going to say x dot my selfie, my selfie, and we're going to pass in a reference to my struct, um, or like I guess it's got to be a box of. It would need to be like a box, box new of my struct, right? Um, then you would think this might work. But what if I did some my other struct here? Then then that ought to work as well, in a way, because my selfie, the method, takes in a reference to self. And the only thing we know about X, like itself, is din my trait, right? So it my this self here is is kind of a is a my trait. So any kind of din my trait would be pass inable to my selfie. But then the actual code of of my code is expecting a my struct, not just any old my, uh, you know, din my trait. So it actually doesn't make sense what we're trying to do here. It kind of feels like it, it does and then it doesn't. So you can't refer to self except on that first argument where it kind of magically knows what self is because it, it, it somehow knows what, uh, what an X is. So you can't do that. You can't refer to self elsewhere. That's maybe slightly obscure. Something that you definitely might want to do is consume um, yourself. So notice that the argument are here, self, is no, there's no ampersand here. So this is something saying, I want to, um, like take in X and then use it up. So we're going to call my consumer here. And a load of things are going to go wrong. But one of the things that's going to go wrong is that, um, X is, uh, has been moved, right? So basically when you call my consumer, X got used up by my consumer. It can't be used later. So let's comment out this line and and now we're not trying to use X after it's been moved. But we've still got an error. So let's have a look at what the error is. The error is um, that you're not allowed to... Well, is the, actually the error is you're not allowed to move a value of type din my trait because we don't know the size of it. So you can't move it to somewhere else without knowing what size it is because you need to like make a space to put it in and then put it there. Um, but the kind of more easy for me to understand way of saying this is um, when you put self... Um, when you put a self here, like this is a shorthand way of saying colon, self colon self, and that it kind of implicitly means that because we're consuming self, we need to know the size of self. So implicitly, this this meth this function is saying um, self is sized, and therefore you can't call it on a, a trait object. Now, if I delete that call to um, to the method, it's allowed to exist. It's just not, it can't be called from that context. It's like it's warning that it's not used, but it's allowed to exist. It runs, the code runs fine. Um, but it's warning us. Uh, yeah, but the point is you can't call it on X. If you made it like some other my struct, like so, then you could call it like so, and it would be absolutely fine. No problems with that. And our warning's gone away as well. So yeah, the point is you can't use it from that context because of the same reason we've had before. This, 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 we've, we've implicitly said where self is sized. Okay. So that was that. So let's get rid of my consumer. Now, a couple of slightly more subtle ones. Um, let's first talk about a different receiver. So, um, we don't even need to call this method for it to all go wrong. This makes the object, the, the trait not object sa safe. So, uh, my trait can't be made as an object. It's not object safe. And the reason why is my different receiver method has a self parameter that cannot be dispatched on. Um, and it suggests maybe we change it to be a reference to self instead of a reference to a box of self. Yeah. So I've done something a bit subtle here. I've made self be a reference to a box of self. 
And that's not in the list. So here's a list of all the things that self is allowed to be. Self is the receiver. It can be just ampersand self, which has, which is like a short, shorthand way of saying colon ampersand self, uh, or a mutable reference to self, or it can be a box or a reference counted pointer or a asynchronous reference counted pointer. Is that or like atomic reference counted pointer or a pin of one of the above. But because I put a, an ampersand before my box, uh, that was actually technically not allowed. So, I mean, in this case, there's probably no reason to put an ampersand before my box. I could have just made it box of self and it would have been fine. But the question is why? Why is it just this very limited list of things which are allowed on a trait object on the, on the self, on that first argument, the receiver argument of a, um, a method on a trait object? And I think, I don't know for sure, but I think the reason is that the compiler has to, has kind of special rules for constructing that, uh, fat reference that, um, with a V table and a reference for V table, the, the data and the, the V putter. That's the fat reference, by the way. D- data plus V putter is like, uh, some, sometimes referred to as fat reference. Uh, and there are other types of fat reference, but yeah, it's like a, it's kind of like a pointer with some extra information in. And the extra information is, um, the pointer to the V table. Um, yeah, anyway, point is the compiler is constructing you that V table and all that stuff. And it has this limited list of things, which it was prepared to do that for probably because each one has to be a bit special the way it does it. Uh, and it's not prepared to do it for just some random type like this, which is probably no use. So, uh, probably perfectly sensible. So let's get rid of that. So basically the fix for that would be just don't use your weird receiver type. Just use one of the normal receiver types. Uh, now, of course, that is a bit of a problem if you're if you've written your own version of pin or something, you know, like some re- if you're doing some really clever thing, that could be a problem. All right, so let's look at this one. So this is our last example we're going to look at. We've 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 made a, a function which is like a manually created async function. So you might be used to async functions looking like this, async fun, and then it just returns. Well, in this case, it returns unit, right? But like. Um, so look, look like that, or even no, even because it's returning unit, it doesn't even need the arrow. But anyway, you get the point. You're used. You might be used to async functions looking like that, but you're not allowed that in a trait. Like soon, maybe the compiler will support that, and this will be a bit easier to talk about. But yeah, if you want to write an async function in a trait, you can just you can use the async trait um, uh, 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 crate with an async with the async trait macro. Oh, it's really awesome. You should definitely use that. But uh, you can't use it for um, trait objects. And so I've manually implemented the same type of thing of like, this is basically that the, the syntax you saw before, it like D sugars into something which is pretty much like this, or maybe identical to this, which is that it returns something which implements a future where the output type is the unit type. And here I've just implemented it, by the way. So this is not important for the example, just to explain to you. This is an async block. And actually the, the type of this async block is essentially something that implements future. So future is a trait. Um, uh, so you can't return something of type future. You can return something that implements future, but it, you're kind of not allowed to mention that actual type. Um, but the compiler knows that it, it does implement future, but it's kind of an unnamed type. It's very similar to when you're returning a closure. Um, and you're not allowed, to, you can say it, impl- it implements fun or whatever, but you can't actually say the type of the thing you're returning. Um, so basically that type of thing, that implicit return value like that is not allowed. Um, and we're going to try and think about why maybe. So yeah, let's just confirm it again. So exactly the same thing. My trait can't be made into an object because this method references an impl trait in its return type. So actually anything that says impl blah as in the return type is not allowed. And I think it's for a similar reason to the generic type parameters thing. Like basically in order for this to make sense, the compiler has to kind of know in order for the V table to make sense, like in order to construct this list of methods, it needs to know all those types up front. And in this case, it doesn't know the type of this thing until runtime. Uh, I think. Yeah, it can't, it can't generate the code for any of these methods. They have to be kind of pre-generated and put into the V table. So this method doesn't make sense to go into the V table. Now, I'm pretty sure if you just say, we're self-sized on this, and then don't call it from within that object context. We should be okay. Let's double check that. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So it's fine. We didn't call it. If we try to call it on the on the trait object, 
Um, I mean, it's it's an async function, so it's all hell's going to break loose. But yeah, let's just imagine we try and call it. It's going to say, no, you can't call that because this is a trait object and this has the where self size saying you can't call this on a, on a trait object. Okay, so we've gone through there my, the rules of like what 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 makes a trait object safe and we've also gone through like ways of working around that basically if you've got a associated function that you want to have on your trait but you don't want it to mess up object safety you put that where self colon sized on there you're still allowed to have the function or method but you can't use it in the context where you've got a trait object and just to be absolutely doubly triply sure the context where you've got a trait object is where you've got any kind of thing like x is here where you don't know the actual type. Now, we know the type because we're looking at the code, right? But the compiler doesn't know the type. All it knows is this is a box of din trait, or this could be a reference to something of type din trait as well, or a mutual reference or, or something like that. Um, anywhere where the compiler doesn't know the type of the thing, we can still do stuff with it, like you've seen. We can call my method on it. But the, um, in order for it to make sense, the trait needs to only consist of stuff that... Um, follows those rules because it doesn't make sense otherwise if you really think about what's happening underneath that at runtime we're figuring out what x what how to call my method by going and looking up my method in a v table so it's got to be only one my method and the compiler has to know exactly all the types in that uh, for that to make sense so you can't have uh, methods on your trait that don't follow those rules where which allow it to make this like dispatch well, the, the phrase it uses is dispatchable right these um, methods that are that it can create put in that v table and go and look them up at runtime hope that helps i know this is super difficult to understand my understanding is probably not um correct in every aspect so corrections welcome uh, any questions or anything stick them down below in the comments and together we'll try and figure it out i'll ping me on mastodon um or join my matrix room and we'll f we'll find our way through it and like if i got stuff wrong i'm very sorry um but uh um i think most of what i said i'm reasonably sure is correct although probably not complete um but yeah let me know if not or let me know if something didn't make sense hope it helps the next time we'll be on to uh good ways of writing code in rust and bad ways of writing code in rust uh probably less heavy than this this was pretty heavy wasn't it see you next time